All right, so today we're going to look at uh, juvenile rheumatoid arthritis. So rheumatoid. Now, ju juvenile rheumatoid arthritis uh, it can be classified into five broad categories. And uh, even within those categories, there are some subcategories. So the first uh, category is called oligo articular juvenile ju uh, uh, juvenile rheumatoid arthritis, articular. This is also sometimes called posse, uh, which I believe is the same thing as illegal, which means a few. Um, after that, we have polyarticular uh, juvenile rheumatoid arthritis. And so uh, in polyarticular, uh, it's divided into two subgroups, uh, and that's, due to, uh, that's um, dependent on the presence of rheumatoid factor. So it's either going to be uh, rheumatoid factor negative or rheumatoid factor positive. And when it's rheumatoid factor positive, this is also sometimes referred to as early onset adult rheumatoid arthritis uh, because it just it, it seems, seems to mimic uh, the adult type just having it happening in children. And then um, there's also going to be systemic uh, juvenile rheumatoid arthritis, and I'll just get a little smaller here so I can fit uh, two more categories. And so then um, after this, we have uh, enthesitis. Enthesitis is not necessarily the joint, but it's more, let's go this way, let's go, try to center this. Okay, so it's not necessarily the joint, it's uh, more related to the tendon and the, the part where it attaches to the bone. And finally, we have uh, psoriatic. Uh, which is associated with the condition of psoriasis, which is primarily a uh, skin condition. Uh, so, which is the most common? Uh, the, the most common is going to be illegal or articular uh, with 40%. Uh, between rheumatoid factor negative, that's slightly more than rheumatoid factor positive, uh, so 20% and 15%. Systemic tends to be 10 to 20%, and the other two are uh, pretty rare. So, uh, let's talk about the definition of each one. Um, the illegal allig articular is going to be when it involves less than four joints within six months. So what if, you know, they have three joints involved for five months and then another joint in one month and then after eight months they have five joints involved. That's called extended. So if they end up having more than four joints, so it becomes five plus joints, but it takes longer than six months then we call it extended. And this actually has a, uh, this tends to be a little bit more severe uh, than, than other uh, types of uh, rheumatoid arthritis. Um, and also, okay, we'll, we'll talk about that later. Okay, so uh, with rheumatoid factor negative and rheumatoid factor positive, uh, these is going to be any time we have more than five joints, less than six months. So that's going to be polyarticular, and that applies to both of these uh, categories. In systemic, it's going to be greater than five joints within six months, but with, it, but with systemic symptoms. So these are going to be fever, rash, uh, things such as those. Uh, now we talked about decitis. This is actually going to be at the tendon to bone attachment site. So it's actually not necessarily even the jo joint that's involved. And finally, with uh, psoriatic, it's going to be a rash. Uh, that's going to be, um, you know, associated with. Uh, so the age is actually can help you differentiate as well. Um, illegal articular tends to happen with children less than eight years old. Um, polyarticular is going to be, if it's rheumatoid factor negative, that's usually between eight to 12. And rheumatoid factor positive is great to, uh, greater than 13. And again, you know, the way you won't think of it is rheumatoid factor is an adult disease. So it tends to happen in older children as well. Uh, uh, systemic can happen in any age and as well as enthesitis and psoriasis uh, it's not associated with any specific age group but these three you can see a pattern youngest is oligo then rheumatoid factor negative rheumatoid factor positive and then systemic can happen at any time so that kind of helps me uh, remember it a little as well uh, boys and girls um, that in, in rheumatoid factor negative boys and girls are equal but rheumatoid factor positive girls tend to be more than boys kind of like lupus uh, and um, with the other three, I don't believe there's any uh, specific boy or girl uh, prevalence. Actually, I think there is one of them. It'll come to me. But one of them actually has a preference as well. Oh, actually, it just came to me. Ethicitis. Ethicitis happens more in boys. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so uh, that's the general outlook. Now, let's talk about the joints involved. 
So, uh, what joints are involved? Um, when it comes to the illegal uh, articular, uh, it's generally going to be the knee. The knee is most common. Uh, and um, you can also have, uh, you know, some other, like uh, the knee, the ankles, uh, uh, some of the other large joints as well. Uh, it's typically associated with like morning stiffness, they say. Uh, any type of morning stiffness or uh, swollen joints. And hip is quite unusual uh, for, for hip. So there's pretty much going to be no hip. You, that would kind of be a very unusual case. Uh, with rheumatoid factor negative, this is going to be the large and small joints of the hands and feet. Of hands and feet. Okay. Uh, and so this is going to be like your knees. Uh, ankles and your wrists uh, can can be included in that. Now, what's also interesting with this uh, with this one, where you don't find uh, much in the other ones, is temp uh, uh, temporomandibular joint. So your jaw. Now, the other ones do have it, but this is more common here. It's much more common here, and the spine is also uh, typically involved. But again, just like the other ones, there's no hip, no hip involvement. Um, with rheumatoid factor positive, this is going to be very uh, similar uh, to regular rheumatoid arthritis. So it's going to be symmetrical. It's going to involve the uh, hands and feet, you know, and it's going to be very aggressive and erosive, just like with adult uh, adult um, rheumatoid arthritis. With systemic, um, it could be any joint, and uh, when we start talking about extra articular, you'll, you'll see that it's actually the systemic symptoms which are more prevalent in these cases. Ethicitis, uh, the sacroiliac, is a very important joint, and um, there's also associated with spinal pain and stiffness. So, th so this is kind of uh, more in the back and hip area. And um, with psoriasis, it's primarily the fingers, uh, it, it causing dactylitis. So, uh, that's uh, the uh, issue there. So let's continue. Let's extend our little chart here. So these were the joints. Let's talk about uh, symptoms outside of joints. Now, a, a huge symptom that you want to watch out for is uveitis. So when, where do you, can you get uveitis or just eye involvement, right? So in Aligo, you can get something called iriditis. Uh, uh, and you don't get this in polyarticular or systemic, but it does show up in... Uh, ethicitis, where you can get uh, anterior uveitis, and uh, psoriatic, which is also anterior uveitis. Now, the important thing here is this one is painful in psoriasis, whereas in um, illegal uh, articular, it's going to be painless. Now, this is important um, in, so I'll just kind of focus here now, we'll just uh, focus on uh, illegal articular. Um, this is important because you do need to make sure you do a constant uh, slit lamp. Uh, and, and you, because this can lead to blindness, uh, it can lead to uh, formation of cataracts, uh, it can even lead to glaucoma, and um, so you, you want to make sure that you, you monitor this regularly with slit lab screening, so you probably want to get a um, ophthalmologist involved obviously here, and you want to treat this with uh, glucocorticoids tend to help, uh, as well as uh, mitriatics to uh, increase the size of the iris and so this and also a really really important point this is associated with ANA uh, generally patients with ANA positive you want to worry about uh, you want to start checking their eyes make sure uh, that there's no issues there now with rheumatoid factor negative uh, there is not uh, there is no extra articular uh, symptoms extra articular uh, very very little there so uh, th that's kind of easy to remember there right uh, with uh, rheumatic, rheumatic uh, RF positive, uh, we do get those classic rheumatoid nodules. And if you remember, this is uh, when you get them, uh, these little like, I guess, uh, concavities on the elbows and knees at the pressure points. Uh, this is going to be prevalent about 5 to 10% of the time. Uh, you can actually get vasculitis as well. And there's associated lung disease. Um, this will also continue uh, once they get older to adult uh, rheumatoid arthritis. So it's kind of a poor prognosis there. Uh, systemic, so now we can talk about uh, systemic uh, rheumatoid arthritis. So systemic, um, 
It's actually very interesting. It's, it's a little tough to diagnose early because you might get the systemic symptoms first. Uh, the systemic symptoms might occur months before uh, any joint involvement. So in the beginning, it, you might not really be thinking juvenile rheumatoid arthritis until the joint gets involved. So what kind of symptoms are there? The, the, the most important is going to be that the fact that it has a fever. And this fever is associated with a rash. And this rash goes away whenever they get better. Um, there's no fever, sorry. And they, they describe the rash as, you know, erythematous, like a red, uh, you know, also the classic uh, salmon, uh, salmon colored, uh, and it tends to be maculopapular rash. Uh, there is also other symptoms that they'll get, uh, serositis, which is going to be pleuritis and pericarditis. Uh, there is a lymphadenopathies, uh, which are prevalent there, and hepatosplenomegaly. So, and again, remember, they might be having fever, rash, you know, lymph nodes involvement, uh, you know, pericarditis, and they might not have any joint involvement until later. So this is something you also want to think of. Um, you, there is some typical labs that I do want to mention here, which is kind of uh, unique to only the systemic. Um, they will have raised, e well, all of them will have raised ESR, uh, they can have raised WBC and platelets as well. Uh, this is also typical with anemia. And of course, we kind of mentioned hepatosplenomegaly, so you're going to, you know, you can expect uh, raised liver function tests. Um, but what's also important, they can get something that's pretty serious, which is called the macrophage activating activation syndrome. Uh, and this is going to be basically a lot of, you're going to look at the, you're going to look at the blood work and there's going to be a huge amount of macrophages. Uh, a lot of T cells, and uh, you're going to have a lot of interferon gamma and uh, GMCSF uh, activation. And this is going to prompt you to do a bone marrow, uh, to take a look at the bone marrow to rule out. You have to rule out infections, because this, would, this is what you would expect in an infection, or malignancy. So uh, you, you want to be starting to think along the lines of leukemias or lymphomas whatever it may be. So you, as you can see in the systemic type, uh, much more uh, of the systemic symptoms are actually more prevalent in many ways than even the joint symptoms. Uh, what would you, in ethicitis, what would you, what would you see? Uh, you would diagnose it if it needs to have two of the following. So two of the following. So we'll go through this. One, they have to have uh, sacroiliac tenderness or spinal pain plus or minus spinal pain so this is very very uh this is one of not very specific but it is one of the things you want to look for uh the second thing is their hla b27 positive so uh, ethicitis is associated with b27 so uh that means it would be associated with uh spondylitis reactive arthritis you know inflammatory bowel disease all these things would be uh, there uh very strong family history so if there's a history of a primary secondary relative uh, that have the same condition, that is w one of the uh, criteria. Uh, if they have associated anterior uveitis, and if they are greater than f uh, eight years old, and they're a boy. So this is, uh, if they have two of these, you generally will uh, diagnose it as ethicitis. And the good thing is, is it is, does have a good prognosis with treatment. So as long as they get treated, it's going to be, uh, it won't be too bad of an issue. Now with uh, psoriasis, I mean, that's a whole other topic here. You, you have the uh, salmon-colored uh, scaly type of lesion. That's, of course, uh, the most common uh, presentation there. And you have anterior uveitis. Cool thing about this one, it, um, well, not a cool thing, I guess, but one thing about this one, it has a variable course uh, with remissions and exacerbations. So uh, that's also something to keep in mind. Now, um, Luckily, there is a diagnostic criteria. So let's let's kind of talk about uh, how do you diagnose it. So diagnosis. Uh, diagnosis is first of all, uh, there will have to be uh, six weeks of uh, persistent swollen joints. So this is going to be the, the first thing. If, if they've only had it for a few days, that's not enough to do it. So they have to have about a week, a month and a half of joint, swollen joint to start thinking about it. 
The second thing is they have to be less than 16 years old. Because uh, this is juvenile, so by definition they have to be children. Um, then what you have to do is this is primarily a diagnosis of exclusion. So you have to exclude other causes. Septic arthritis, uh, you know, anything, anything else that, that might, might have uh, be causing this. Now, unfortunately, there is no test to rule out or confirm uh, juvenile rheumatoid arthritis. So it does make it a little difficult to uh, answer, uh, or sorry, uh, to diagnose, because uh, there's no real lab that can help you say, yeah, it is, or something that can completely rule it out. Uh, so, so this is generally what you're going to have to do. You have to do a full workup, uh, looking at uh, rheumatoid factor ANA. Uh, you're going to be looking at um, if there's any sepsis, uh, any septic arthritis, or any other uh, type of issues there. So this is it can take a lot of uh, time and uh, lab work to rule out all the other causes. So uh, how would you treat it once you do identify it? Um, initial treatment is physiotherapy. So you do want to start with physiotherapy to maintain the uh, range of motion and to uh, uh, you know to um, help them d deal with the some of the contractions that may occur or and, and, and to prevent a lot of the contractions that are going to occur. Uh, the other thing is going to be you have to remember this is a multidiscipline uh, team effort. Uh, you, of course, you have to get the physiotherapist involved. You have to get a social worker involved. Uh, there, d there does tend to be some, you know, psychological issues there. Uh, the, you do need to get an orthopedic, uh, someone with an orthopedic specialist involved. You have to get an ophthalmologist involved, like we talked about earlier, the uh, uveitis, and of course the rheumatologist, as well as possibly a pediatrician. So this is a kind of team effort here that goes on. Uh, for, as far as medication this goes, so meds, uh, you can try giving NSAIDs. Uh, and you know, uh, intra-articular corticosteroids. And intra-articular means you, you put an injection, corticosteroid. You put an injection straight into the joint, and that helps decrease and eliminate uh, and eliminate the uh, pain. Again, you can't do this too much because of the fact that it, it does cause the uh, tissue to start degenerating. So this is something you can do every once in a while, only when there is severe pain. So this is something we wait for that. Um, then you can use some of the disease modifying um, disease modifying what is it Arthri rheumatoid arthritis drugs I forget what they are but uh, th these are a lot of drugs uh, the, the first one that you probably want to use is uh, methotrexate so this is ki kind of uh, oh, especially if they're seropositive if they are positive you definitely want to use that and so this is similar to how you treat adult onset rheumatoid arthritis and then finally, now they have these biologic agents. Uh, so these biologic agents, what they'll do is they're kind of antibodies against specific inflammatory factors. So uh, you have uh, things available such as uh, etanercept, uh, uh, adalimumab, and infliximab. These are all going to be uh, antibodies against uh, TNF-alpha. TNF-alpha is considered one of the main uh, inflammatory cytokines that do uh, cause progression of the disease so an antibody against it is uh, very helpful. Okay, thanks. Hope you guys found it helpful.